Prasanna, Assistant Professor, Department of PCE, Institute of Aeronautical Engineering. In this session, we will discuss about Advanced Microprocessor, that is 80286 Microprocessor. So, before going to the Advanced Microprocessor, here we need to discuss about the first Advanced Microprocessor what has came into existence after 8086 microprocessor. So the first microprocessor after 8086 microprocessor is 80186 microprocessor. So here this 80186, all these comes under Intel family only. So while discussing about the advanced microprocessors, we should know compared to 8086 microprocessor, in what aspects these are the advanced microprocessors. So generally, to say that it is advanced microprocessor, we will compare the features of the 8086 microprocessor with these advanced microprocessors. Here, features like uh, what is the size of the data bus, what is the size of the address bus, memory size, in how many operating modes uh, it can operate. So all these are different features we have to consider here. Now, before going to detailed discussion about the 80286 microprocessor, first let us have a small idea about the advanced microprocessor 80186 and we will see here different features of 80186 microprocessor. Now, so this 80186 microprocessor is called 16-bit microprocessor because its data bus size is of 16 bit. So here, based on the size of the data bus, the size of the ALU will be. So here ALU stands for Automatic and Logic Unit. So the data bus size of 80186 microprocessor is 16 bit. Next feature is, it is having internal registers. So we have seen in 8086 microprocessor, different internal registers are available. We have seen that there are 14 registers and each register is 16 bit in size in 8086. Similarly, coming to 80186 microprocessor, like 8086, we will have the register organization in this processor also. Same registers will be there. And so here, in 80186 microprocessor, it consists of additional interrupt vectors. So here additional interrupt vectors means, generally we have studied about interrupt structure. In that interrupt structure, it consists of 256 interrupts. Among that interrupts, 256 interrupts, they are divided into three groups. So group one is called dedicated interrupts. Group 2 means those interrupts are called reserved interrupts. Why? Because they are reserved for advanced microprocessors. And the third group comes under user-defined interrupts or available interrupts. So generally, if you go for 8086 microprocessor, it is using only dedicated interrupts. That is from type 0 to type 4. Coming to the next classification of uh, interrupts in the interrupt structure, that is reserved interrupts that is from type 5 to the remaining. Those interrupts will be used by these advanced microprocessors like 80186. That is why we say that it is having additional interrupt vectors available and powerful built-in I.O. features also available in 80186 microprocessor. And next feature is it is having 1 megabyte of memory and 64 kilobyte of I.O. In 8086 microprocessor also, its physical memory size is 1 MB. So similarly in 80186, its physical memory size is 1 MB and also it is having 64 kilobyte I.O. And this 80186 microprocessor can be operating in different frequencies like 10 MHz and 8 MHz. Now, 
So those are some of the features of 80186 microprocessor. While learning about 80186 microprocessor, we have interfaced different uh, peripheral devices in between I.O. devices and 8086 microprocessor. So here different peripherals includes DMA controller that is 8257 we have used and interfaced 8086 with the DMA controller. And next we have studied about 8259 programmable interrupt controller that is one more peripheral device which we have interfaced to 8086 microprocessor. Similarly, we have learned different peripheral devices and we have interfaced that to 8086 microprocessor. But here, in this case, 80186 advanced microprocessor, all that peripheral devices will be inbuilt. For example, if you say clock generator, in 8086 microprocessor, in order to produce the clock frequency, we are using the clock generator, external clock generator. And the IC is 8284. But here, coming to 80186 microprocessor, the clock generator what we are using is internal. We will not have any external clock generator. So since the clock generator is present inside 80186 IC, we can say the component count is reduced. And next one is programmable interrupt controller. It is nothing but PIC. So we have studied about 8259. In 8086, we are interfacing externally 8259 PIC to 8086. But here, in this case, 80186 microprocessor, we will not have any external PICs. Already, one PIC will be inbuilt in 80186 microprocessor. It can handle eight interrupts. For example, if the interrupts are more, then it is possible to connect external 8259 ICs. In that case, the interrupter, which is, uh, that is PIC, which is available internal to 8259 IC, it comes under master 8259. And the remaining ICs which you are connecting externally to this 80186 microprocessor, those ICs comes under slave 8259 ICs. And next feature is timers. So here, this 80186 microprocessor consists of three programmable timers. So here each timer is of 16 bit. What are the three timers here means? Timer 0, timer 1 and timer 2. Coming to these three timers, these three timers are 16 bit. Whereas here timer 0 and timer 1, they are used for generating the waveforms externally. And these timers will be driven by the master clock of 80186 by the external clock. That is the function of these two timers. That is timer 0 and timer 1. Coming to the third timer, it is timer 2. Here this timer 2 is internal and driven by the master clock only. No external clock here. Another feature of 80186 microprocessor is it consists of programmable DMA unit. So generally we have studied about the DMA controller, 8257 DMA controller. So once if the system bus access is taken by the DMA controller, the data transfer is performed between I.O. devices and memory directly. But if you go for 8237 DMA controller, not only I.O. devices to memory, it also transfers the data between any two I.O. devices or any two memories. That is memory to memory and I.O. to I.O. data transfer is also possible. Similarly, here in 80186 microprocessor, it consists of internal programmable DMA controller unit. So based on the version, it consists of two DMA channels or four DMA channels. So using these DMA channels in 80186, the data transfer can be performed between uh, two memory locations or the data transfer can be performed between memory and I.O. or the data transfer can be performed between two I.O. devices. And next feature of 80186 microprocessor is 
it consists of programmable chip selection unit generally here uh, in uh, any peripheral devices the chip selection signal will be driven by the address decoder circuit coming to here 80186 microprocessor this is consists of programmable chip selection unit here the chip selection is a built in programmable memory and io decoder we will not have any external decoder available in this 80186 it, it is having internal decoder only so this internal decoder is going to select the chip selection so it has six output lines to select the memory and seven lines to select io and next features of 80186 microprocessor is it can be operating under power save and power down feature so here the power save feature uh, how it can be uh, having means it is operating with some operating frequency in order to run in the power save mode that operating frequency will be divided by 4 8 or 16 that means the operating frequency will be scaled down so because of this the power consumption will be reduced and so the power saving feature is uh, can be done either by the software or by hardware that means by using any instructions or with the help of hardware means by having any external interrupt generation so because of scaling the operating frequency with this factors we can achieve the power save feature power consumption can be reduced and it also consists of one more unit which is called refresh control unit so here this refresh control unit it is going to generate the refresh row address during programming so all those are some of the important features of 80186 microprocessor now coming to 80286 microprocessor this 80286 microprocessor is the enhanced version of 80186 microprocessor that means coming to the features of 80286 they will be advanced somewhat advanced compared to 80186 features let us see in uh, what aspects the features are advanced compared to 80186 now so first we will see the features of 80286 microprocessor so here the intel 80286 microprocessor is a high performance 16 bit microprocessor similarly like 80186 80186 is also 16 bit microprocessor so this is also that is 80286 is also 16 bit microprocessor but it is having high performance now so 80286 microprocessor is designed for multi user and multi tasking systems that means uh, uh, in this 80286 microprocessor and all along with this microprocessor inside the cpu we will have one more processor which can be called as coprocessor 80286 microprocessor will be operating at a frequency ranges 12.5 megahertz 10 megahertz and 8 megahertz clock frequencies based on the versions of this 80286 microprocessor now so here this 80286 microprocessor is compatible with 8086 in terms of instruction set that means we have studied the instruction set of 8086 microprocessor in order to write the assembly level language programs so for 80186 and 80286 microprocessors also we can use the same instruction set that is the instruction set of 8086 microprocessor and we can write the assembly level language programs for this 80286 microprocessor also now coming to the next features here this 80286 microprocessor consists of 
one advanced unit which is called memory management unit so this memory this is the first advanced microprocessor that have this memory management unit so here the memory management unit it will be doing the important task of the operating system and now it is supported by the hardware unit which is called memory management unit so this is the first microprocessor which is having memory management unit so after this 80286 microprocessor we have different advanced processors like uh, 80386 also from there the memory management unit is available 80386 also it has 80486 also has this memory management unit but the first advanced processor that has the memory management unit is 80286 microprocessor now so here this 80286 is the first microprocessor to incorporate the integrated memory management unit so the function of this memory management unit is it can use the memory memory very efficiently now so 80286 microprocessor is having four level memory protection mechanism and it supports for virtual memory and operating systems so it consists of four level memory protection which is very advantage and so coming to 8086 microprocessor it consists of only 40 pins and all the 40 pins will be arranged in the dual inline package but here coming to 80286 microprocessor this 80286 microprocessor is available in variety of different uh, types of uh, pin packages such as uh, plcc so if we go for plcc uh, that is 80286 it consists of 68 pins so here plcc stands for plastic leaded chip carrier and also 80286 is available in ceramic lcc package so here lcc represents leadless chip carrier and also it is available in pga so here pga stands for pin grid array so in different packages this 80286 microprocessor is available continuation to the features here so it consists of 24 address lines that means uh, the address bus width in 80286 is 24 bit and data bus width is 16 bit and this 80286 microprocessor can be operating in two operating modes so what are the two operating modes means one is real address mode other one is protected virtual memory address mode generally when this 80286 microprocessor is operating in the real address mode the operation will be similar to 8086 that means when it is operating in this real address mode it is also going to generate 20 bit physical address only though its address bus width is 24 bit but when this 80286 microprocessor is operating in the protected virtual memory address mode it will be operating differently in such a case it is going to generate a physical address where its size is 24 bit that means all the address lines available in the address bus will be used so these are the two operating modes of 80 286 microprocessor and so as i told in the real address mode 8086 can access up to 1 mb of physical memory so 8086 also accessing 1 mb physical memory only how it is accessing 1 mb physical memory means how this 1 mb we are getting physical memory size we have to write the address bus lines in terms of 2 power so in order to get 1 mb you have to write as 2 power 20 so where this 20 represents the number of address lines the number of address lines so that is why here in this address mode since it is 
addressing only up to 1 MB of physical memory, we will say that it is using only 20 address lines among 24 bit address bus. That means it is same as 8086. Now, another operating mode is protected virtual memory address mode. So, when 80286 microprocessor is operating in this mode, that is protected virtual memory address mode, it can address up to 16 MB physical memory. Along with this, it can also address 1 GB of virtual memory address space. Now, we will see what is meant by virtual memory. So, virtual memory is the extra memory which will be available with the help of hard disk. So, you can see here what is virtual memory. So, here virtual memory is a part of hard disk. So, generally why it is necessary to use virtual memory though physical memory is available means this virtual memory is used in order to store large instructions. Okay. So, this extra memory can be addressed by a computer other than a physical memory. That means by using hard disk. So, that is why we will say virtual memory is also called as extra memory. Now, so for example, in some cases, there exists some instructions which will be loaded in a memory. But for that instructions, instruction sizes will be large larger than the physical memory that has been allocated for that. In that cases, in order to execute that larger instructions where the physical memory is not sufficient, we have to go for using some part of hard disk in order to store that instructions. Okay, So, that part of hard disk is nothing but here virtual memory. So, in these situations, we have to access the virtual memory if physical memory is not sufficient. So, this uh, virtual memory concept we have to use only when 80286 is my microprocessor is operating in protected virtual memory address mode. Now, coming to the detailed discussion about the operating modes of 80286 that is real address mode and protected virtual memory address mode. So, first come Coming to real address mode. So, in the real address mode, this 80286 microprocessor operates just as fast 80286 microprocessor. So, how many times this 80286 microprocessor is faster than 80286 means? Up to 6 times 80286 microprocessor is faster compared to 80286. Next one is all memory management and protection management um, mechanisms are disabled. So, when 80286 is operating in this mode, it acts as just 8086. In 8086, it will not support this protection mechanism, four level protection mechanism and memory management. So, that is why these two will be disabled when 80286 is operating in the real address mode. And coming to here, this 80286 microprocessor is object code compatible. Okay, so what is meant by object code means? Here, object code means it is produced. It is produced when source code is compiled. Okay, so generally, it is object code compatible means, object code means this code is produced when source code is compiled. Coming to the next operating mode, the next operating mode is protected virtual address mode. So, when the microprocessor is operating in this protected virtual address mode, along with the physical memory, it can use virtual memory also. And when it is operating in the protected virtual address mode, it will not be similar to 8086 microprocessor. So, that is why when it is operating in this mode, automatically it is having memory management mechanism. It supports memory management mechanism and also it supports four level protection also. And so, it will be having some advanced instruction set. So, here 80286 
is object code compatible when it is operating in the real address mode. But here, when 80286 microprocessor is operating in the protected virtual address mode, it is source code compatible. So here, what is meant by source code means? Source code means it is it is the program written by a programmer. So it is written by programmer. Okay. Now, so here all those are the features and operating modes of 80286 microprocessor. Now coming to the pin diagram of 80286. So this 80286 microprocessor is available in uh, different pin packages. So this is one of the pin package available here. In 80286 microprocessor generally we can see multiplexed address data lines and multiplexed address data slides. But coming to 80286 microprocessor in this it will not consist of any multiplexed signals. So if you observe here, that is uh, from pin number 7 to pin number 34. If you observe, here it is uh, A0, A1, A2, A3, so on up to A24. So these signals are related to only address lines. So just we have discussed about the features of 80286 microprocessor. In that features, we have studied that the number of address lines available in this 80286 microprocessor is 24 bit. 24 address lines are available. So all these are the 24 address lines. So here in this 80286 microprocessor, we cannot find any multiplexed address data lines. Address lines will be separate and data lines will be separate. And so this is a BHE, pin number uh, 1 comes under BHE. So here you can see a small bubble, it indicates that it is active low signal. So BHE indicates here bus high enable, bus high enable. So we will discuss about the function of all these signals in detail. And uh, coming to here from 36 to 51 pin, here it is a D0 to D15. So all these signals represent data lines. These are the data lines. So this 80286 microprocessor is a 16-bit microprocessor because it consists of 16-bit data bus. So here the 16 bits are D0 to D15. So these are the 16-bit data lines. And coming to the remaining signals here, we, we can see here, uh, this is 63rd pin, it is ready signal. So for this also you can see dot is there, so it represents it is active low signal. And next one is here, clock signal, where the clock frequency can be produced by this uh, 31 pin. And the next one is here, reset. And this S0 and S1, that is pin number 4 and pin number 5. This S0 and S1, these together are called status lines. These signals are called status lines. And this is M by IO bar. It represents memory and IO. And next here, this is the log signal. And here, this is NMI. So, NMI stands for non-maskable interrupt. And here, next one is INTR. So, INTR stands for interrupt request. So, in this A0286 microprocessor also, only two interrupt signals are available. So, these are the two interrupt signals. One is NMI and another one is INTR. So, they comes under interrupts. These are the interrupts. And next one is hold and hold acknowledgement signals. Next here, error, busy and PEREQ. So here P E R E Q. P E represents processor extension and R E Q is request. Processor extension request. And here this is P E A C K. So he, in this case also this P E stands for processor extension and here A C K stands for 
acknowledgement processor extension acknowledgement and next one is this is cod by uh, inta bar and this is cap it represents capacitance so in this case we can see new signals called processor extension request and processor uh, uh, extension acknowledgement why because in this uh, advanced microprocess from 802286386486 and all along with the main processor we can also have here coprocessor coprocessor is also available along with the main processor so what is meant by coprocessor means it is a additional processor is an additional processor used in some computers used in some computers to perform to perform specialized tasks okay now so here this is the coprocessor so here it is an additional processor which is used in some computers to perform specialized tasks so here this uh, specialized task includes some uh, cases like uh, extensive arithmetic extensive arithmetic calculations extensive arithmetic calculations and all can be done so what is the uh, advantage of having all these extensive arithmetic calculations and all means so because of this uh, additional processor along with the main processor what happens means the speed will be increased speed increases uh, now we will discuss about the uh, function of uh, all these uh, pins now here we have seen a uh, different uh, pins that are available in 802.86 microprocessor one of the pin is vcc so here vcc represents power supply signal and the maximum power supply that uh, uh, required for 802.86 is it is plus 5 volts dc supply and uh, next feature is vss so here this vss represents ground connection and next signal is clock signal so using this clock signal only the clock frequency will be produced for 802.86 microprocessor and the next signal is reset so using this reset signal the uh, 802.86 microprocessor will get reset so once if this reset signal is enabled 802.86 microprocessor will get reset internally all the registers will get reset and here the address lines available in 802.86 microprocessor is 24 address lines that is from a0 to a23 and we know that the address bus is a unidirectional bus so using this 24 bit address bus only the address will be transferred next one is d0 to d15 so d0 to d15 802.86 microprocessor consists of 16 bit data bus d0 to d15 so we know that the data bus is a bidirectional bus and next signal is bhe bar so there in the pin diagram we have seen the bubble it indicates that it is active low signal so here this bhe bar represents this is active low signal when it is enabled it represents that a valid data is transferred through the data bus so if any valid data is transferred through the data bus this bhe bar signal will get enabled and next signal is nmi so nmi stands for non maskable interrupt we can also say this nmi as a type 2 interrupt why because among 256 interrupts type 2 interrupt is nmi interrupt so here uh, it is non maskable interrupt it is the input signal it is positive edge triggered and it will be always active when it is active it uses interrupt vector 2 so this interrupt vector 2 is nothing but type 2 interrupt and next signal is 
PE REQ and PE ACK. So here PE represents processor extension and REQ represents request. And this is PE processor extension and ACK. Here it is bar indicated. It represents it is active low signal. So it is processor extension acknowledgement. Now, so what about this uh, processor uh, extension acknowledgement and processor extension request means? So generally, if this 80286 microprocessor wants uh, any uh, help from the coprocessor, any help from the coprocessor, it is going to send a processor extension request to the coprocessor. If the coprocessor is willing to do any specialized arithmetic or logical operations, then the coprocessor is going to send this acknowledgement signal to 80286 microprocessor. So these two signals are due to available uh, availability of coprocessor in 80286 microprocessor. Now, so generally, there will be coprocessor, it will be doing only the operations, but the coprocessor cannot transfer the data over the data bus by itself. Then what it has to do whenever, if it wants to read or write the data from the memory, it indicates 80286 to initiate the data transfer by enabling a signal called processor extension request high. And next signal is busy signal. So, it is also active low signal. Okay. So, it indicates the processor extension is busy with allocated job. In any cases, if busy goes low, it indicates 80286 microprocessor to suspend the execution and wait until the busy goes high. And next pins are here, error. So, this is also active low signal. Okay. So, if any error is detected, this error signal will be enabled. If any error signal is detected by the coprocessor, this error signal will be enabled. So, when this error signal is low, 80286 microprocessor need to perform the processor extension interrupt while executing wait instruction. And Next signal is lock signal. So, same whatever the operation that is performed in 8086 microprocessor, the same operation the lock signal will be doing in 80286 microprocessor also. So, this lock instruction is used as a prefix. If any instruction is prefixed with an instruction called lock, okay, so the pin becomes a logic 0 for the duration of logged instruction. So, up to that duration, the bus cannot be handled by, the bus cannot do any operation. And you also have S0 and S1. So, these two are called status signals. And M by IO bar, it represents memory and IO operation. And another one is COD INTA bar. Okay. So, here COD represents code and INTA bar represents interrupt acknowledgement pin and next one is hold so it is the bus hold input signal and hold or hold acknowledgement it is represented as the output signal so all those are the uh, pins that are available in 80286 microprocessor now Coming to the block diagram of 80286 microprocessor, it consists of four sections. So, here the four sections are, one is address unit, okay, and another one is bus unit, second section it is, and the third section is instruction unit, and the fourth one is execution unit. So, here different blocks are available in this uh, address unit. Here, based on all these blocks, this address unit is going to calculate the physical address. Okay. So, address unit is used to calculate the physical address. Okay. And this bus unit is used for fetching the instruction. Fetching the instruction. So, after fetching the instruction, 
it will be placed in this 6 byte prefetch cube. So in order to fetch the instruction, it is going to use all these blocks internally. And the third unit is instruction unit. So this instruction unit is used for decoding the execution. It is used for decoding the instructions. Okay. And the fourth unit is here execution unit. This unit is used for executing instructions. These are the four sections that are uh, available in the internal block diagram of 80286 microprocessor. So already we have discussed about uh, all these uh, signals. Okay. Now we will see the function of uh, all these blocks. So here first let us discuss about the uh, address unit. So all these are the uh, four functional blocks that is address unit, bus unit, instruction unit and execution unit. Let us discuss about uh, each unit. Now, so here first one is address unit. It is used to calculate the physical address. So we know what is meant by physical address. So physical address means it is the location where actually the operand is recited. So in order to calculate the physical address, segment address and offset address is required. Okay. So here this uh, address unit consists of, this is uh, offset adder which gives the offset address and uh, all these blocks are related to the segment which gives the segment address. So by considering this offset address and segment address, this is the adder which is used to calculate the 24 bit physical address. So this unit is used for calculating the physical address what the microprocessor wants. And also the address lines derived by this unit may be used to address different peripheral devices. So the 24 bit physical address calculation will be done. After calculating the physical address, this address unit is going to give that physical address to the next unit. After this address unit, next unit available is here, bus unit. So the physical address will be given as input to the bus unit. So this is the bus unit. It consists of address latches and drivers. So here the purpose of this address latches and drivers are so this address latches and drivers in this unit is used for transmitting the physical address over 24 bit address bus. So this uh, bus unit is used for fetching the instructions from the memory. After fetching, it will be stored in a 6 byte instruction queue. And also it consists of a, a bus control unit here. It also consists of bus control unit that controls the prefetch module. Okay. So all these prefetch instructions will be arranged in a six byte instruction queue. After arranging all the bytes in the six byte instruction queue in the bus unit, next it will be given to the next unit, which is called instruction unit. So this instruction unit Based on all the internal blocks that are available in the instruction unit, see here instruction decoder is there, three decoded instruction queue is also there. That means when that fetched instructions are given to this uh, instruction unit, this instruction unit is used for decoding that instructions one by one. After decoding each one, it will be placed in this queue. And so the decoded instructions are latched one, uh, onto the decoded instruction queue, the output of the decoding circuit drives a control circuit in the execution unit. Then this information, decoded information will be given to the uh, next unit. Next unit is execution unit. So execution unit is going to take input the decoded information. So here in the execution unit only this ALU will be present and register bank is also available. So ALU is used for performing the arithmetic and logical operations on the decoded data. So the execution unit is responsible for executing the instructions 
that has been received from this uh, uh, previous unit and the decoded instruction queue sends the data path of the instruction over the data bus. After performing all the arithmetic and logical operations by the ALU, all the results will be stored in a register bank. So you have different uh, registers that are available in the register bank. In that registers, all the data will be stored. So here ALU is the heart of the execution unit which performs the arithmetic and logical operations and then it is going to send the result over a data bus and it will be stored in the register banks. So that is what about the architecture of 80286 microprocessor. Now coming to the register organization of 80286 similar to 8086 only. Okay. So totally there are 14 registers available in 80286 microprocessor. Among them, 8 comes under general purpose registers, 4 comes under segment registers, and 2 comes under control registers. So, all these are the registers here. So, coming to general purpose registers, see 0 to 16. General purpose register size is 16 bit. So, all these are the registers that comes under general purpose registers. So, that is a uh, uh, AX register, BX, CX, DX, along with that base pointer, source index, destination index, stack pointer, all these comes under general purpose registers. We know already we have studied in 8086. Now coming to the segment registers, segment register size is also 16 bit, 4 segment registers are available. Along with that here, status and control registers, okay. So instruction pointer that is IP and status word. So status word here, it is nothing but flag register. So here flag register of 80286 microprocessor. So the flag register size is 16 bit. So if you see here, this is a carry flag, parity flag, auxiliary carry flag, zero flag, sign flag and overflow flag. So these six flags comes under conditional flags, conditional flags, okay. So, whereas here the three flags like uh, trap flag, uh, interrupt flag and direction flag, these three flags comes under control flags. So, already we have studied about these uh, flags in detail with examples in 8086 microprocessor. But here coming to these two, IOPL and NT, these two are the only new flags that are available. So here this NT stands for nested task and this is IOPL which stands for IO privilege level. So already uh, we have said what are the uh, six uh, conditional flags. You can also call that conditional flags as status flags. And these are the three control flags. Okay. So sign flag means generally the sign flag will be set when the result of any arithmetic or logical operation is negative. And the zero flag means this flag will be set if the result of any arithmetic or logical operation is zero. And next, the parity flag uh, will be set based on the lower bytes of a result. So, if the lower byte consists of even number of ones, then this parity flag bit will be set. And carry flag. So, this carry flag will be set when there is a carry out from MSB. Okay. So, if you are performing any 8 bit operation, if the result is not 8 bit, if there is 9th bit present, based on seeing that 9th bit only, we will say that the carry bit is set or not. And next one is trap flag. So, if this trap flag is set, the processor will enter into single step execution mode. So, the single step execution mode will be used during debugging process. Next one is interrupt flag. So, generally whatever, if any interrupt comes, the processor in order to accept that interrupt, this interrupt flag bit should be set. 
Next one is direction flag. So if the direction flag is zero, then the processor will be operating in the auto increment mode. If the direction flag is one, then the processor will be operating in the auto decrement mode. So this direction flag will be used during string manipulation operation. Next one is auxiliary carry flag. So auxiliary carry flag means if there is any carry from lower nibble to higher nibble or if there is any borrow from higher nibble to lower nibble, then we will say that the auxiliary carry flag is set. Next one is overflow flag. Okay. So here if any carry flag is generated, in the same case we will say that overflow flag is also generated. That means if the result of any signed operation is beyond the storing capacity of a register, then we say that this overflow flag bit is set. Those are all the flags that are uh, similar to 8086 microprocessor. Only two new bits are here. One is IOPL. So here IO represents, IOPL stands for IO privilege level. So here two bits are used in the protected mode. It holds the privilege level from 0 to 3. Two bits means if it is 0, 0, privilege level 0. If it is 0, 1, privilege level 1. So here, 0 assigns the highest privilege level, whereas 3 assigns the lowest privilege level. And next flag is NT. So here NT stands for nested task flag. This flag is used when this 80286 microprocessor is operating in the protected mode. Okay. So if this bit is set, one task will be calling the another task. That means task calling another task. And so that is uh, from D0 to D15. Coming to the extension here, we call it as a mission status word. Here it extends from D16 to D7, 31. Generally, we call it as a mission status word. So it consists of four bits, that is task switch, processor extension emulator, monitor processor extension, and protection enable. Now, so this is the mission status word. It consists of these uh, four flags, that is uh, from D16 to D19 bits. And generally, in order to use this mission status word, we have instructions like load mission status word and store mission status word available in the instruction set of 80286 microprocessor. Now, coming to that four bits that are available in the mission status word, first bit is PE. So, PE stands for protection enable. So, when this bit is set, 80286 microprocessor will be operating in the protected mode. And next bit is MP, monitor processor extension. So, when this bit is set along with 80286 microprocessor, we can have one more coprocessor. Okay. So, which indicate the arithmetic coprocessor is present in the system. And next one is EM. EM stands for emulate processor extension flag. So, it causes the processor extension absent exemption and permits the emulation of processor extension by CPU. And the last bit is TS. So, here TS stands for task switch. It indicates next instruction using extension will generate the exception 7, permitting the CPU to test whether the current processor extension is for the current task or not. And so this is how we have to calculate uh, the real address mode that is considering the offset address, segment address, adding these two with the help of adder, it gives the 20 bit physical address. And so generally when it is operating in the real ad address mode, it access only one megabyte of memory. And here the instruction set is same as uh, 8086. It is going to use uh, the address lines uh, only 20 bit address lines. Now, coming to the protected virtual address mode, it is going to generate 24 bit physical address by using this global descriptor and local descriptor table. So, we will discuss about uh, these things 
uh, in detail while calculating real address mode and protected address mode. And so this protected virtual address mode, it is going to have uh, the virtual address by selecting 16-bit selector and 16-bit offset. Okay. And uh, TI represents table indicator. If it is 0, GDT is selected. If it is uh, 1, LDT will be selected. So here GDT stands for global descriptor table and LDT stands for local descriptor table. In the real address mode, it is able to find only 20-bit address, whereas in the uh, protected virtual address mode, it is used for generating 24-bit address. Now, so here, the interrupts that are available in 80286 microprocessor will be categorized into three. That means, uh, external or hardware interrupts. These interrupts may be because of maskable interrupts or non-maskable interrupts. And another reason is interrupts due to software, which can also be called as internal interrupts. And next one is interrupts generated internally due to some exceptional conditions. And here all these are the interrupts that are available in 80286 microprocessor. And coming to the interrupt priorities of 80286, so instruction exemption is having the highest priority. Next priority is for single step. Next priority is for NMI. Next priority is for processor extension segment overrun. Next priority is for INTR and next one is for INT. So these are the interrupt priorities of 80286 microprocessor. So this is the brief discussion about one of the advanced microprocessor that is 80286. Thank you. Like, share, and subscribe. Hit the bell icon for more updates.